The Caitlyn Clark hate has officially gotten out of control. We should be debating whether Caitlyn Clark is having the best rookie season in WNBA history, but instead, we have seen a three-time MVP Cheryl Swoops officially induct herself into the Hater Hall of Fame. As it was reported by Stephen A. Smith that Cheryl Swoops was supposed to commentate an Indiana Fever game against Dallas, but instead was pulled from commentating the game because the network did not think that Cheryl Swoops was going going to praise Caitlin Clark's recent earned success and instead was going to continue to hate on her. How have we gotten to the point where networks are removing Hall of Fame commentators from talking about Caitlin Clark? And does the WNBA not realize that with all of this hate, they could be truly damaging their sport? As what's up, Mike here. And when you have a generational talent like Caitlin Clark, who is also seen as an all-time fan favorite, you have the opportunity to truly launch your sport to heights it's never seen. The NBA once was in dire financial trouble. The NBA once aired its finals on tape delay. Now, NBA franchises are worth billions of dollars and the league's rise in popularity can be attributed to one thing. It's star players. First, we had Magic and Bird. Then we had Michael Jordan. Then Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Steph Curry. And now the NBA is on the Victor Wembanyama hype train. It seems the NBA understands the formula. Take a star player and promote him to the world and watch the fans pour in. The WNBA has the blueprint in front of them, so we have to ask why the Caitlin Clark hate? I think we can all agree here. If this was a star rookie for the NBA, who only gave wholesome press conference answers all the time, while also playing at a historic level, the NBA media would call that man the next face of the league. Meanwhile, ESPN recently put Angel Reese ahead of Caitlin Clark in their Rookie of the Year race in a clear attempt to make headlines and draw clicks. An attempt that does nothing to help women's basketball, and the problem is people are falling for this bait. Let's be clear here. Caitlin Clark in the WNBA has been a phenom. In her first year, she is currently averaging 18.9 points, a league leading 8.4 assists and 5.8 rebounds per game. She currently sits fifth all time in assists per game in a single season. Yes, fifth all time in WNBA history. And the only woman to ever average more assists in a single year is Courtney Vandersloot. So no disrespect to Angel Reese, who has been a rebounding fiend, but in terms of the rookie of the year race, ESPN is literally making this narrative up. If we follow the money, which never lies, we find that DraftKings has Caitlyn at a minus 3,000 favorite to win Rookie of the Year, which means if you were to bet $10 on Caitlyn Clark to win Rookie of the Year, you would make 30 cents in profit. AKA, this award is a wrap. The media might lie, Vegas's odds never do. But guys, before we continue, I'm very excited to say that this video is sponsored by SeatGeek, where the NFL season is right around the corner, and I don't know about you, but I want to be watching the game live and in person. And that is why our friends at SeatGeek have you covered. Everyone, not just new users, everyone can use my code, Mike10, for 10% off of any ticket on SeatGeek. Sports, festivals, concerts, you name it, SeatGeek has you covered as SeatGeek also rates tickets on a scale of one to 10. Green being good, red being bad, so look for those green dots. And no matter how many times you have bought tickets before, again, using code Mike10 is going to get you 10% off of your order. So what are you waiting for? Open your SeatGeek app, use my code Mike10, and get 10% off of your order right now because this offer is only available for a limited time. That is code Mike10 for 10% off at SeatGeek. Thank you again to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back into today's video. So we know that Caitlin Clark is going to win Rookie of the Year. The question is, why are people pretending otherwise? Stephen A. Smith believes the answer to that question is simple. Evans takes the three, takes the two. A lot of contact from Reese on Clark underneath. Kennedy Carter now with 12 points off the bench. I, I think that's going to be a flagrant one. Jealousy. Stephen A says that in a media world filled with former players, a lot of these former players are jealous of Caitlyn, and it's hard to find another reason. As right now, Caitlyn Clark is truly showcasing a transcendent game at the highest level. Caitlyn isn't just a logo three-point shooter. On July 6th, Clark took the court against the best team in the East, the New York Liberty, and put up 19 points, 13 assists, and 12 rebounds in a five-point statement win. This stat line gave Caitlyn the 
first triple double by a rookie in WNBA history, and she wasn't done there. As on September 4th, Clark was at it again, giving us 24 points, 10 assists, and 10 rebounds against the Los Angeles Sparks for triple double number two. Meaning, as a rookie, Caitlin Clark has already become one of just six players in WNBA history to have at least two triple doubles. The record for triple doubles in a single career is 10, held by Alyssa Thomas, meaning that Caitlin Clark is already one fifth of the way to the all time record. Speaking of records, Caitlin has also been a record machine in general. She has the most three pointers by a rookie, the most total assists by a rookie, the most assists by any player in a single game ever with 19 against Dallas. These are once in a generational type stat lines I'm talking about. So truly, we have to ask ourselves, instead of all the negative conversations that have been had around Caitlin Clark, why are we not talking more about, is this the best rookie season in WNBA history? Is Caitlin Clark on path to become the best player in WNBA history? As I said before, the NBA was built off the backs of young, marketable stars, and Caitlin Clark is as marketable as they come. She is a freak of nature as a shooter. Her game is electrifying. She literally embarrasses players as a one-woman highlight reel. She also, off the court, is humble, takes the high road, is always seen giving autographs to young fans. Not to mention, she fills up the stat sheet and she is a winner. So what truly is the problem? If the WNBA just embraced that they had an all-time talent on their hands right now, they could put a plan in place that would draw in lifelong fans and a new generation of girls who will be much more likely to follow in their favorite players' footsteps, making the sport of women's basketball better and better. Instead, though, we have seen a lot of dirty fouls. We have seen a lot of pettiness in post-game interviews. And just in general, Caitlin Clark is always in the headlines with some form of controversy as the main talking point when again, people are really just hating on true greatness here. Because throughout all of WNBA history, the list of rookies who have averaged at least 18 points, eight assists, and five rebounds per game is just one Caitlin Clark. This gets better. The list of players who have averaged at least 18 points, eight assists, and five rebounds per game in general is just one Caitlin Clark. What? If we were to lower our requirements to 15 points, four rebounds, and three assists per game in a single season, we finally have a list of names to go off of as in their rookie years. Tamika Catchings, Candace Parker, Brianna Stewart, Diana Taurasi, and Sabrina Ionesco are the only six players in WNBA history to put up these stats in year one. That is an absolutely elite list as every one of these players, other than Caitlin and Sabrina, have been a WNBA MVP. And if Sabrina's career continues along the way it's been going, every single player on this list is going to be a WNBA Hall of Famer or already is one. The biggest difference between all of these names, Caitlin Clark is the first megastar off the court the WNBA has ever had. In 2022, the women's NCAA final brought in an average of 4.85 million viewers. In Caitlin's senior season, 2024, 18.88 million viewers watched her end her career against South Carolina. Four more million viewers than the men's game had. This is where Team USA truly messed up. The Caitlin Clark effect at the Olympics would have been tremendous. In the WNBA, the viewership effect has been the same. The Indiana Fever have been in all of the league's 14 most watched games this year, and the WNBA All-Star Game set record numbers with over triple the amount of average views than they have ever had before. There has been one difference. It is Caitlin Clark. But despite the fact that Caitlin actually won three three gold medals representing the United States in lower age brackets throughout her career already. Caitlin Clark was not asked to the Olympics and we have to imagine that the women's game missed out on four to five the views as that is normally what Caitlin pulls in. The WNBA could have had a situation where fans came to watch Caitlin. Team USA could have had a situation where fans came to watch Caitlin and while they were watching Caitlin found a new favorite player among all of the WNBA greats that were playing but the league chose not to grow their game even though picking Caitlin would not be a stretch at all. The Indiana Fever started their season at 1-8, but currently stand at 18-16 and, and just clinched a spot in the playoffs. This is Indiana's first playoff appearance since 2016, which is notable because Indiana was currently tying the record for worst playoff drought in WNBA history. And also, before Caitlin Clark got to this franchise, they were in shambles. Not only were they in the middle of a seven-year playoff drought, in those seven seasons, the Fever had a combined 
combined record of 58 and 149. And in 2021, Indiana went six and 26 and followed that up with a five and 31 record in 2022. This year, Indiana is in the playoffs. And what's even more exciting is that Caitlin is already starting to play like one of the best players in the WNBA. In June, in 11 games, Caitlin averaged 15 points, 6.1 rebounds, and 7.2 assists per game on 41% shoot. Respectable numbers, but as she has adjusted to the WNBA game, she has taken a massive leap, as in the eight games she has played between August and September. Caitlin is averaging 24.5 points, 9.1 assists, and 5.6 rebounds per game on 48% shooting. Truly elite numbers as we head into the playoffs, and so we have to think, what is Caitlin about to do next? So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video. And I want to know, what do you think down below? Is Caitlin Clark going to be the GOAT of the WNBA? And if you're still here, I think you're going to really enjoy this video in the top left corner on the most important trade of the 2024 NBA offseason, or this video in the top right corner that YouTube is recommending specifically for you.